Maybe another source of hope will come from somewhere. I don't know. Slight pun there, but that also needs to be proven. And, and I'll leave that there. Just a couple quick takes before we uh, end the segment. Little bit of positive news. I know we, we get told every now and then that we highlight the negative. Unfortunately, a lot of the important things are negative. And there was a point in time where we were highlighting important positive things or things that we agreed with at the very least um, on this show. But recently that became harder and harder. Some minor things that I just want to highlight just a little bit. First of all, the trade minister, well, she is leading a delegation, that is to say they are already in the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic apparently is a trade partner that, that imports some of the goods that we manufacture here. I believe including things like toilet paper, etc. Basic goods, but still goods nevertheless. She's leading a pretty large trade delegation, relatively speaking, I think. It's, 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 it's judging it on a scale, folks. The reason why I highlight this is, look, we want to see moves, no matter how small or how big, with regards to our manufacturing sector, to try to increase our exports, increase our market, increase our volume. So it is a market that we're already in. However, what can we do? You, you are buying our goods. It makes it easier now to try to expand the volume of sales. If we could figure that out, no matter how small the increase is, it's still growth because ultimately speaking, we're a nation whose export situation and manufacturing situation, I think, is not necessarily anything to, to, to beat our chests about or, or it's not something we could rely on. And this is not gonna let us rely on it overnight, but we need to see, even if these initiatives are too small and, and disappointing in the scope, we need to see at least this in order to get ourselves moving forward. And I'm happy for that because it seems as though in many other ministerial or government positions, we don't even get the minimum of what we need to see to get the situation moving forward. Last story, I found this interesting. Well, actually, this I found surprising. The situation with regards to Brent Thomas and how that was handled and what was allowed to have happened by somebody in authority. I don't know if we'll ever find out who. That didn't necessarily surprise me, which is to show how much faith I have in the system right now. But this I did find a bit surprising, and that is the fact that TNT did rise in the rankings of world, um, free, uh, world press freedom. We rose by six points. Um, from 31 to 25 out of 180 countries. It's interesting that we rank quite so high on press freedom, and, and perhaps we, maybe this is the cynic in me now taking it for granted with regards to how much press freedom is out there in the world. Maybe there isn't that much. Um, and, you know, we have a parliamentary democracy with a vibrant media landscape and civil society where freedom of the press is a constitutional, constitutionally guaranteed and widely respected right. I'm not entirely sure that it's widely respected, but so far there is some truth to that statement. Um, and um, given by the reporter Sans Frontiers or Reporters on Borders, and uh, today is World Press Freedom Day, so kudos to us for at the very least being able to hold on to what we have of the fourth estate. Folks, we have to take a break. When we return, I will be welcoming our usual Wednesday contributor. We'll be getting into some more heavier topics. Unfortunately, that's all the good news I could find this morning and as much. And we will have more serious things to talk about when we return after this here on Talking Point on your content capital, W-E-S-N. <laughs> 